Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm uh, just fighting a recent, uh, some sort of a bug of some sort, so I'm uh, trying to uh, do my very level best. It's a pleasure to be here in Lethbridge. It's a, uh, it's a pleasure to be in a free facility. Uh, one of the last times I was here, uh, uh, Mr. Lanier sitting right here and I, we went to the LCC, and it wasn't the Lethbridge uh, Community College, it was the Lethbridge Correctional Center. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, and uh, um, it's uh, it, it's a it's a pleasure to be here, and I'm trying to uh, be as hopefully as coherent as I can. Speaking isn't necessarily my forte. Uh, I'm one of those get her done kind of guys, and uh, it's a. It's a pleasure. I, I want to qualify everything I say here, ladies and gentlemen, with the comments that uh, I have no malice. Sometimes in my conversations I might use a name or in a, in a sidebar story based off your questions, I might use a name uh, and, I, and I don't have any malice to those people. It's the process and the policy that they are involved in and possibly uh, reluctant to change. Um, I can still remember uh, in my mind's eye um, phoning Mr. Lanier, who was, I believe at the time, uh, involved in the Winter Wheat Growers Association, and I was trying to convince him into this uh, this uh, expedition of hauling grain across the border, and uh, obviously he was quite reluctant to do that. And uh, actually when we were in jail, and, and this is one of the stories that I was gonna tell on Ike, because uh, he was standing like this far, this far away from me the first night we were in the, in the uh, facilities, we'll call it, and he said, Rick, this is just and yes, Ike, you were right. Uh, it, was, it was a foolish law, but it was meant, ladies and gentlemen, in the best of uh, 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 intent. And some there are, sometimes there are unintended consequences to a law uh, going forward. And uh, in this case, uh, it took uh, activists like, uh, like Ike and myself, and I see another friend of mine uh, sitting at the center table there, Brian Otto, uh, who actually went through the, just put your hand up, Brian, so they know you, if you don't mind. Um, I don't have a good story to tell about you, so this, that's it. Uh, uh, but uh, it, it, it took a lot of emotion, and it took a lot of determination to see the end goal. And that's what, uh, through my trials and tribulations, um, I came to know uh, several people. Uh, I had the distinct honor of uh, walking with uh, Stephen Harper. In fact, the day that he passed the legislation in the House of Commons, it still had to receive Senate approval. But the word came around in the Speaker's Lounge behind the Speaker's chair, and the room was about this big, but the word came around that Stephen wanted to have a picture with all the jailbirds. And, uh, you know, you just kind of go, wow. <laughs> you know, or, or, you know uh, it, it, it's some of those things that show the humanness of some of these people and, and the inhumanness possibly that you may see in the media uh, going forward. And, and we see a lot of that high, strong emotion going on in the federal party right now with the uh, exit of uh, the prime minister's uh, chief counsel and secretary. You gotta know that there's more than smoke there, but, uh, you know, how will we, how will we uh, affect that or, or, or get a change? And, and we have a democratic model, ladies and gentlemen, to do that. And, and that's some of what, uh, you know, some of the hardest days, the darkest nights that I had uh, was after 2002, the 10 years before 2012, when Stephen Harper actually became a majority government. In that period, they were a minority government, but they simply did not have the numbers and it wasn't, uh, equitable for them to lose government based on a regional policy. And so I received several phone calls uh, involving expletives uh, that I had no guts and, uh, and you know, that, that we should go back to the board again and challenge it again and make Harper, make the government do that. So, uh, you know, it's, it, it's been an uphill uh, battle, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to uh, go over four points quickly, and uh, Larry, if I'm getting down to the last five minutes, if you just throw something, please. Uh, it would be great. Experiences in the ledge that have led to my being an independent, and uh, what I hope to change, and why that is necessary, and what I seek to ho or hope to do as an independent MLA, if elected. The fourth point is uh, what I'd like to tell the public about the party process. 
So I'll try and go through that, and uh, if at any point you feel really overwhelmed that you want to ask a question, I'd be happy to take it. I prefer a, a dialogue, but I understand the format here today is for you to listen to what I have and then try and digest your meal after that, and then we'll go back to questions. So um, I'd, I'd appreciate that. Uh, so it's not necessarily in a, in a concrete order, but that's the way I have it written down here, and I'd like to go with that. Some of the things that I talked about to you earlier were effected to me by an email that my cousin sent um, one day before I went and spoke at a 500 person um, interdenominational rally in High River the one year after the flood. Uh, Danielle wasn't able to be there even though it was her hometown, but I drove for five hours to get to High River uh, to speak to those people. And there's approximately 500 there. There is some, there are some young children playing in the front on blankets. It was just a fulsome, wholesome, excuse me, a fulsome, wholesome occasion. And um, the email that my cousin sent to me used the word fear, F-E-A-R. Now, fear can be affected in different ways, and and uh, you know some would say that maybe based off your your level of uh, acumen or whatever. In my case, I've been a pilot since uh, 1974. I've done significant aerial application ac across uh, Saskatchewan and Alberta, uh, and the most fulfilling times I've had is speaking to the farmers. I'm getting off topic. Fear, ladies and gentlemen, face everything and run. But the other side of it is face everything and rise. And for those of you who have had adversity, and Abraham Lincoln used the phrase, uh, the, the, the most, one of the most difficult tests on a man or, is to give them power. Or sorry, is to give them adversity. I got that wrong, sorry. But the even greater test of a person, and I've seen that full on, front on, from the, from the various uh, final, um, uh, iterations of the progressive conservative government in this province. And uh, the, the, you give someone power and, uh, and, and, and they, they turn into a completely different person. And that's part of my reason for, for doing what I am. It's a horribly uphill battle. Uh, Ike and uh, 12 others of us, uh, we called ourselves the Dirty Dozen. We, we weren't that good at math. But uh, it's, uh, we faced gigantic adversity. But moreover in that, ladies and gentlemen, we faced a lot of bullying. In your face, bullying. And a good friend of mine said that uh, bullies present themselves in a lot of different fashions. And that could be, again, no malice, but that could be a bureaucrat because they can, uh, a meter maid because they can, uh, a guy on the side of the road because they can, um, the, uh, the uh, paramedic at a site that takes control of that site. Um, you know, they, they have to take control in the, in the case of a paramedic, and I'm not belittling that in any way, ladies and gentlemen, but different people react in different ways when they are given power. And, and part of my life's career is flying in an egg plane with dangerous chemicals in the front that I have to put on that field over there and not that field over there because Joe is going to be wild at me because I nuked his canola. You know, uh, but I had the power to do it, but I, but I didn't do that. And so uh, it's, it's important that we, and, and through my potential leadership in this independent challenge, I would call it, and, and I, that's why I introduced Ike and Brian, because they were people who were involved in the grain marketing challenge way back in 1995. And, and I had a good friend of mine, uh, I'm hoping to see him later today, he's been stricken with brain cancer. Uh, he drove into my yard one day and I said, Kevin, why, why aren't more people thinking about this? And he just shot back to me just as quick as a lightning bolt, he says, well, Rick, where were you five years ago? So as you think about this, uh, this thing, ladies and gentlemen, uh, know that uh, north of 60 in, in, uh, in Nunavut, uh, Northwest Territories, and Yukon, that they have what's called a consensus government. It's not unlike your uh, counties or your, your uh, towns elect their, their, their people in their own areas, but those people then decide who is going to be their representative, ultimately your representative, going forward to be, to be the leader. Uh, 
There's no um, internal befriending or tickets to Hawaii or, geez, you're a really great guy, uh, whoever, uh, even though they're, they're a uh, legislative staffer. We have legislative staffers, ladies and gentlemen, who are making this, when the writ is called, they leave the legislature and they go work for the party. But they, but they do that controlling uh, mechanism of alignment on the, the morning after election. And we wouldn't have been as blessed uh, to see our change from my, un my humble understanding, and Ike or Brian could correct me, to have uh, the federal minister who lived in the riding just east of me there, uh, Jerry Ritz. He was actually pounding on the PMO office door before the, as some people describe them, the short pants crowd even got there. Stephen, this is number one. This is what we're doing. We're gonna do this. And, and it takes that determination. Now that's an elected official who had no fear. He was facing everything, ladies and gentlemen, and rising to the occasion. And if many of you know, Jerry Ritz has been an exemplary model of a representative for agriculture. Some people like to say that I have a uh, persona, I, I could use the word reputation, but I could uh, say that has a negative connotation. But uh, you know, it's, uh, it's important, ladies and gentlemen, to stand up and, and, uh, and, and defend yourselves. Uh, to one of the interviews that I did earlier to, with the gentleman out here, there were people in this country and other places around the world as well who defended democracy with their lives. All the stuff that we're doing, even though, uh, Ike, we were in jail, facing the, the knee-high BS, uh, well, maybe it was up to here, I don't remember, but uh, it, 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 we did that with the belief that knowing that there was nobody gonna come into our cell room in the middle of the night and, uh, and inject a piece of lead in the back of our head. We had a democratic right to do that. We were asking for our rights. We weren't belittling others who differed, but we wanted to have our voice heard, heard too. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, um, two years ago at Farm Tech uh, in Edmonton, uh, former Premier Stephen Harper pulled this thing out of his handheld device out of his breast pocket, as I've just done, and said, ladies and gentlemen, since the invention of this device, there's been over one billion people have been able to instantly transmit and receive information. Now, he said, I'm not uh, debating the quality of that information, because there is a lot of uh, bad stuff on there. But part of what had happens, and in talking to the news media guys, uh, you know, I use the words gotcha moment. Because it, you, can, you can climb the highest mountain on this thing, but you do something wrong and you're in the deepest gutter. And, and, and without proper judgment of that information based off uh, somebody just trying to, to take you down. And so um, I, I think it's... Uh, it's important to go forward. Um, if I'm unsuccessful in the riding, and we're in a strong conservative riding, uh, some people have asked me uh, that, uh, you know, while strength, when you're just going to split the vote. Well, in, in 2012, in Ram Heller Stetler, there was 92% of Albertans in that riding voted conservative. The NDP had 7%. <coughs> In 2015, of which I was highly suspect as to what the heck was going to happen, uh, and I still ran for the Wild Rose. I was one of five that stayed with the Wild Rose the way I had been elected. Uh, I was rewarded, ladies and gentlemen, with 2,500 more votes than the conservative candidate. The total of those votes at that time came to, and I'm using rough numbers here so you can Twitter it out that I was wrong, uh, that uh, it, it comes to about 13,000. And the NDP at that time, when they were achieving popularity, uh, received 3,000 votes. But if you split the conservative vote, that's 6,000. That's twice what the NDP uh, got. And I full, wholeheartedly believe that the NDP aren't gonna get 3,000 votes in this next election in Drumheller Stetler. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a, you know, I think that's a safe bet. Uh, but I was highly apprehensive going into that. Uh, just a back story, if you'll bear with me for one minute. Our son Jay was 24 years old at the time. We, were, we had no idea that this event was gonna take place. And for those of you, I, I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself here. Um, when we saw the contract that we were supposed to sign to, to go to the other side of the party, uh, our son Jay said, Dad, you got elected Wild Rose? 
You're staying Wild Rose. Let's go on the zip line. If you don't, Dad, we won't even be able to go to a farm auction without you taking and, and, and he was right. It's an electoral trust. It's part of our Albertan way. It's something that I've worked with through my whole aerial application career when somebody will come, like Ike or whoever it may be, a uh, farmer, and put down fifteen dollars or $20,000 worth of chemical on the ground, expecting me, he had the trust that I would take and aerially apply that to his field. It's, it, it's a trust thing, ladies and gentlemen. And in Alberta, I think it's so intrinsic that people earn someone's trust. You don't demand it, and that's what those guys did. They were demanding the trust of Alberta. Not one of those people got elected. Our leader, Danielle Smith, couldn't make her nomination. And, and that's the, the, the grit of it, I guess, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, with that, um, I'd like to talk about previous instances of uh, independent MLAs, and one of the most recent one was uh, just over here, uh, Mr. Ray Speaker. And he was a man of the people, I believe. I've never had a chance to meet the man, uh, but I hear that he got elected and then re-elected as an independent. It was a total anomaly to, to the party beliefs. And uh, all, all great uh, innovations start with an innovator, or a, some people call them a barbarian, somebody that, uh, you know, tries something. You might think in this room, you could think of Thomas Edison, uh, who in, in, invented the incandescent light bulb that proceeded along. Uh, then eventually we came to uh, uh, fluorescent light bulbs, and now, now we have these things, LEDs. This thing runs on, on hearing aid batteries. Uh, you know, uh, th this is some of the advancements that we have to a paradigm shift. And I don't know uh, whether my uh, entry into that field is going to make a difference. When I phoned Mr. Lanier and told him about us going to, to the border, I had no clue uh, that we could make the difference. And especially when we went from 34 to 17, and four went and said, well, we can't change the law this way. But it was the 13 of us that had some, some thread of a subliminal idea that we would give the political capital to, in the end, the Harper government. And they made that change. We went to jail, ladies and gentlemen, in the Chrétien government, and they would have preferred that we stayed there even after, uh, after they got exited from the chamber. So uh, it's, a, it's an onerous task, it's an uphill task, uh, but it allows us something which I've uh, augured for and what I've been able to achieve through my flying is a certain type of freedom going forward. Um, again, I have to qualify, no malice. The recent, uh, and, I, and I quite like this, uh, Michaela Glasgow, uh, she, she just hit the wrong button on her thing saying that the carbon tax in their church was 50,000 instead of 5,000 or something in that neighborhood. Well, the whole party, even members um, in, in Northern Alberta were, had their heads down and they were hiding behind a desk somewhere thinking that they're gonna take study from that. Well, that, that has nothing to do with those people up there. That has to do with the people in Brooks Medicine Hat. And if you look back to uh, the time of Ralph Klein, you know, yes, we did have a ruler. Everybody called him King Ralph. But there's a difference between a benevolent ruler and a dictatorial ruler. And, and I think it's important, ladies and gentlemen, uh, in, the, in the riding in Edmonton, we only have 87 seats. So half of that, and I've taken it on a piece of paper, half of that is 44. That is all a government needs to effect their policy. They don't need 70 seats. They, there, there will be lots of uh, concern, there will be lots of questions in the legislature, but the question is just have your, have your game on. Pass legislation that Albertans want. Not something that you decide. Don't, don't, don't take the, and write this policy down yourself. Uh, you, you know, ask uh, Albertans. Again, ladies and gentlemen, I have to qualify this. No malice. I was the agricultural critic at the time, before the AGM. The policy that I had worked on was several members of the barley growers. Uh, I'm sorry, Brian, I don't know if you got a phone call in that, but uh, um, the, the uh, cattle com commission and feedlot operators, some people were on the ground. Former head of UGG uh, was at the thing, and we, we created a policy that we thought would, could go forward to be acceptable to a broad spectrum of Albertans. Ladies and gentlemen, it never saw the light of day. 
So when I, at the end of this last session, I specifically went to Mr. Kinney and asked him, I feel lost here, Jason. I endorsed you, I, I need to have, I've lost my nomination, but how can I help? Is there a policy? I'm not looking for a job. Don't get me wrong. And now the media guys are gone. No, there's one over there. I'm not looking for a job. I'm not looking for patronage. I'm looking for a way to improve where we live. And I'd like to play a part in that. Well, that conversation went on at the end of, or at the first week of December, somewhere around the 10th. And of the 10th of January, I still hadn't received a, a response from him. One of his uh, people that was supposedly to, uh, I'll say, coagulate or uh, compartmentalize policies sent me an email back and said, you need to talk to this guy, and I won't say his name, but this guy was a legislative uh, chief of staff, a government employee. Like, after all we'd done, Ike, for 20 years before that, trying to change our policy, and then I, you know, gone through the trouble of being elected, couldn't, couldn't get it passed, I, I would have to explain my position to a government employee? It causes some of this. And so uh, I know I'm a little early, but uh, I think I'll leave it at that. Um, two things uh, to, to, uh, to this thing is, uh, talking about the party policies, the party process, and something that I've, uh, uh, you might be interested to know that a good friend of mine, uh, Cards and Table Warner, MLA Grant Hunter, had talked to me about this a long time ago, when we were first elected in 15. And I, I was in shell shock from the floor crossing event. I had no, you know, it's an it's a onerous uphill climb. I, I wanted to be the best representative I could and, and not go off and create a whole new potential policy formation for the province of Alberta. So in the, in, the, in the situation of a party, and I was guilty of that, when there are big numbers of a party, there's a comfort level. People have a comfort. If somebody is tweaking off on Strankman or whatever, these other guys, well, yeah, Strankman deserves that. We'll just let, we'll let that slide, you know? But ultimately, it shouldn't be that. It should be the people of the riding that are make the, making those comments. And another thing is, uh, in, in our Westminster system, we just, we simply believe it's tradition. And, uh, you know, I've, I've had several of these party bureaucrats say, well, Rick, it's just the way it is. You know, and I, and I got that, Brian got that too, when he'd go to Ottawa or whatever, well, that we, but it's just the way it is. You, you, you guys got, ladies and gentlemen, there's almost 100 microbreweries going forward in this province as we speak. And that's because of guys like Ike and Brian and humbly yours truly that fought for that change. We didn't know what the hell we were doing in 95, 96. We knew we had intrinsic values and, and a need for freedom, but we didn't, we didn't know the, the, the potential. Now we're seeing the financial effects of that, positive effects. So, um, you know, like there's, there can be, uh, you know, to, to uh, again, to the party thing, there can be the herd mentality. And I don't know how many of you have cattle here or whatever, but anybody knows when you're, when you're around a big ranch or this ranch has, uh, there's a large feedlot operator over here, you know, it's uh, known to be, uh, you know, province uh, stature with a number of cattle. Oh, I work for that guy. In other words, they're riding for the brand. Well, this isn't that, ladies and gentlemen. This is way different than that. It's a long ways from talking what I'm doing to walking like this. And we saw and lived that in the wheat board, uh, wheat board uh, fight. But now we can somewhat, you know, somewhat snap our suspenders and say, well, we've, uh, we've created a positive change for Alberta. In my riding, there is several irrigation projects. Some were uh, uh, constructed in the 20s. Some were constructed in the 40s. They're still not at their irrigation capacity. And I'm going like, what? you guys. And some of them are right beside Highway 36, what I call the barley trail. You could be growing barley there all over the place, or corn. You know, a lot of the area of land around here is already uh, phosphate loaded. They, they, they really can't uh, put down more manure. It's, it, it's a, the phosphate levels are too high. We could go up there and do it. But you need to start on these projects with some foresight and innovation. And uh, I, think, uh, I think, you know, we can, we can try and do that. I had a good conversation. I'm going to end with this. Uh, um, that uh, 
Robin Luff, the NDP MLA that left the, uh, left the NDP caucus, I had a chance to finally read, I thought she was just a disgruntled MLE, and then somewhat dismissed all her diatribe there, but I had a chance to read it after I made my commitment to, to seek independence. And she's, and she's after the same thing. They have a riding, or a riding issue there with uh, a bunch of uh, lower cost housing that needs to have a regulation change so that it'll stabilize the regulations for those people. She couldn't get it through her caucus. She stood up and fought, fought for it with the greatest of her vigor and was and quashed, saying, no, nope, we're not going there. Could you make that change uh, as an independent? Uh, there's a possibility. You can publicly, to our, to our grain thing, uh, which I can, Ryan can know, that the, the court of public opinion, ladies and gentlemen, is the highest court of the land. And, and when you see what's going on in Ottawa there now, even though there's guys that are getting sidled out the side door and whatever all else, the court of public opinion is going to judge them. And hopefully they'll judge them in a conservative way. <laughs> Thanks.